Hello and welcome to this comms first uh, session. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, we are having an awesome day here. My name is Stola Hansen and I'm the producer of this session. As always, please ask your questions in the Q&A and we will go through them at the end of this session. If you don't have time for all of them, we will go out to the breakout room and uh, continue the discussion there. This session is called Contract Management in Microsoft Teams. Um, our presenter today is uh, MVP Sharon Sumner. And um, take it away, Sharon. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I'm really delighted to be here. This is the one event that I've been looking forward to all year. So absolutely delighted to be part of such a Teams focused event, especially now there's so many of us online using Teams. It's really important to get to grips with how big the Teams landscape is. So I'm going to talk to you about contract management in Teams. Now we're going to use several different technologies. So I haven't put them all on my title slide here because it was getting a bit too big. So let's jump straight in uh, and get started on the topic. Really quickly, just want to say thank you to all of the sponsors. These events would not happen without sponsors. So really keen to put this slide in a couple of times and say thank you to those people that are help make, helping to make these events happen. So a little about me, um, Sharon Sumner, MVP, um, my first MVP this year. Uh, so I'm a business applications MVP. So really focusing around that kind of SharePoint, Power Apps, Power Automate and Power BI space. Um, I came from SharePoint originally and I've been too many decades in the SharePoint space. So I really understand the underlying document management side of SharePoint, but more importantly, that Office 365 layer that gives us this fantastic platform that we're on today. Um, so please do uh, scan the little icon there and it'll take you to all of the social, social stuff about me and how to get in touch. And I do literally always say yes to a coffee and that even means a virtual one. So do ping me and uh, let's chat through anything you want to on the Power Platform. So a little bit about me and my mantra, which is getting to value faster. I say it all the time, so much so that I've been asked to write a book about it. Um, but really what I'm saying is that I am 100% business value focused. So for me, all of the tools that we've got are great technology to play with. But unless there's a business solution, unless there's something that's going to save time, save money or automate things in a way that's going to really add value to a business, then I struggle to be interested in it. So my mantra is to show you a complete solution creation from beginning to end, everything from the columns that you need all the way to the solution, but I'm gonna keep it vanilla. Because if I show you the basis of how to add this together, and we won't get pretty with Power Apps, et cetera, but if I show you the method of adding it all together, then you can add the flavors on and you can see where you want the solution to go. And if you have any issues with that, ping me, get in touch on social, and we'll spend some time chatting through what you could do with the solution. And I'll even help you if you get stuck on any of that. I record demos as short videos because I've had the technology go wrong too many times on the day, but it also means that they'll be there in the slide deck for you to keep and to follow through yourself. So for me, it's enabling you to go away and create something of your own or in the vanilla state that I've created it alongside so that you can bring that value directly into your business. So we've got lots to get through, so let's crack on. So for me, Teams is all about creating communities and by a community, it really is this like minded group of people coming together, working as a team, doing the part that they're doing faster. Um, so one of the teams that I want to focus on is a contract management team. And the reason is that contract management, it sounds so simple, but actually it's a really complex area in that we normally have lots and lots of contract types to be dealing with across the sphere. So having contract management in a team space gives us the ability to look at this life cycle as a whole, as a team. So we want to have a look at creating documents. And really, that's the first piece of the puzzle. Often these documents are long and complex and they need data added into various different spots within that document. And if we can automate that, we make this thing a whole lot quicker. Once the document's been created, it then tends to go through several iterations to get it right. And they will always say that no contract meets first contact or, or survives first contact. So that once a, doc a document has gone out, it will change in several ways before it gets to a completed and signed document. 
bringing a completed and signed document back into the business then means that we have all of the data that we need for that all important renewal step. So whether that's um, any type of contractual agreement that has a renewal or sales agreement or anything that has that ongoing piece where we need to revisit again and effectively start the process one more time. So to break it down into a solution that I can show you in some pieces during this session today, we're going to break it down into three. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a contract using SharePoint to hold the templates and the list of data. And we're going to surface that in Microsoft Teams and then we're going to use Power Automate to fill in the blanks, pick the right document and give us the information that we need to get it signed off. We're then going to visit the other end of that life cycle and do a power app to convert that final signed contract into the expiry tracking data. And then we're going to look at how we can monitor and notify within the team space when something needs attention. So part one then is really the contract creation. So I'm not going to read all of this out. You can you can grab this later, but we're really looking at these long and complex documents that need the right template. Um, with the right data filled in it. Let's face it, that's the key to this. It's very quickly getting the most up to date version of a document and getting that key contact information within it or contract uh, information within it. So this could be used for supplier contracts, NDAs, employment contracts, invoices, T's and C's, the lot. Anything that has that, it must be completed and it must conform to a standard and complex legal document. The technology we're going to use to do that, we're going to look at Power Automate and we're going to use the Populate a Word template connector warning. This is a premium connector, but the business value is insane. So it is worth being a premium connector. So we're going to use Teams and we're going to use SharePoint and we're going to use Power Automate. So let's jump in. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our environment. So you can see I already have, I'm in Teams in the browser and I already have a contract team. So we're going to open from the files tab, we're going to open in SharePoint to get to the underlying SharePoint site. And so that we can get a new list on the menu, we need to click the logo to go to that home page. So now we're going to actually create a document library first because we need somewhere to put the templates. Now, it may be that you want the templates to sit somewhere in a finely grained SharePoint permission site, but for, for ease, we're going to put them within the team. So it may not be that you want everybody to have access to edit the template documents. So here we are, we're going to put two in. Now, the two that I'm using here, there's a simple document, which I'll just open and quickly show you. And this one is just one that I've made from scratch, just with a couple of um, fields in there. And you can see that I've put in type, model and contract. Uh, the developer toolbar is how you put these fields in. I'll show you how to get that developer toolbar in a second. So we've just got some simple text fields. Um, and they literally are just text fields that we're going to add data into just for display purposes. You'd never have a document this simple, but this is just to show you one that I've created from scratch. The other one is the out of the box word statement of work template. Now, this is much longer document and has several places for you to fill in. So if we go back to the developer tab, now we added the developer tab by right clicking and customizing the ribbon and ticking developer. It's not ticked by default, so you must go and add that. So looking on the developer tab in design mode, you can see all of the places. Now this is a complex document that's got lots and lots of places for you to add field data into, which makes it very exciting for this as a template structure. But there's some magic in here and you'll like it when we get to it with Power Automate. So we've got our templates document library. We've got a couple of templates in there that have fields that can have data pushed into them. So the other thing that we need is we need a location to put the contract in once we've created it. So we're going to spell it correctly and call it completed contracts. This is where the contract's going to go once we've created it. And then finally, we need a list to be able to enter the data to be filled into the fields. So this is our contract details list. And again, I'm going to show you how to do this in a vanilla fashion. So let's add some really simple columns in here. So first of all, we're going to need to know what the company name is. Um, we are probably going to need to know a couple of extra things. Let's, let's stick to three and put in the contact. So it's probably going to be the person that's going to sign it. And then I think I'm just going to stick to this too. 
So we've got a list and we've got two document libraries. So that's really set up this part of the solution. Now we need to get the flow or the Power Automate uh, flow in place. So we're going to jump off to Power Automate. And we're going to create an automated flow. I'm going to skip this part because we know what the trigger is that we want. So the trigger that we're going to use is the SharePoint on created item. But actually, we're going to use created or modified. And I'll show you why a little bit later. So we're going to pick the list that we just created, which is in the contract team, and it's called contract details. So when somebody puts information into contract details, we want to go and create a contract from it. So again, we need the um, SharePoint connector. Oh, sorry, the SharePoint action. To uh, create the Word document. Oh, actually, yes, we're going to populate from a Word template first. That's quite right. See, this is why I record them. Um, and we're going to pick the uh, the template location that we've already set up with our templates in. So if we pick the templates document library and then importantly, rather than the dynamic picker, we need to click the folder to pick the document that we want. And if we pick the word statement of work, here's the magic. Look at that. An insane amount of magic happened for you there. If you pick the simple document, you'll see that it picks out just the fields that need creating. So this is dynamically giving you the fields that are available for you to fill in. So let's start with the simple one, um, just because the other one has got far too many fields for us to get started with and just show you. We'll put uh, company name and contact name in and we'll give the, um, the type as a title just for now. And then we are going to create a Word document from that template. It's important again that we pick the correct one. So we're looking for uh, create a file in SharePoint, not the OneDrive one. Here we go, the SharePoint one. So we're now going to create the file. So if we pick the location where we want it to live, so this was our contract location. Again, we need to pick the folder path. We need to pick the correct team first. I picked the wrong one there. Pick the folder path that we want it to live in, which is going to be contracts. And then we give it a file name. Now, there's a little eccentricity here on Power Automate, and I don't know whether this will go away by the time you get to it. But every time I put this bit in here with the dot docx, and it is important you do that, otherwise it's just going to give you a file with no extension and it won't know what it is. Um, but every time I put that in the first time, it clears it out for me and I'll show you that in a second, which is just something to be aware of. So we're going to go and get the content from this word template. Now, best practice, if we rename this, uh, the action that is actually creating that document from template. So if we say if we call this add my values to the document template, when we're down here and we're fetching this file content, we can see add values to the document template. We know we're getting the right action within our flow. So let's just hit save on that and see if we can get this to create. So that gives us the flow. Oh, and this will just show you if I knit backwards, we're going to rename, always rename your flow so that you know which one it is to come back to. And then we are going to save again. And even though we've just saved it, when we hit this button, it's going to ask if we're sure we want to leave. We know we do. We're fine. If we go back into the flow, you'll see that my dot doc X has gone. So I don't know why it does it, but just be aware that it does it just on the very first time. If we now put docx in there and hit save and then we hit exactly the same button to back out and then come back in again. You'll find that it kept it this time. I've no idea why. It's just one of those things. OK, so we can now go and check this by adding some de details into this contract details list and see if we get a document out the other side. Let's give that a test. If we jump back to the team, and we're going to add a new item into this contract details. So we're just going to call it test data <laughs> and Sharon Flowers, and we'll put me in as the contact because it's a name I can easily remember. And then we'll just hit save. And there we go. So we've got some data. Now, if we look back in the flow, and we just hit refresh here. Now, be warned, don't panic. It takes a minute for this flow to kick off and then it takes about another minute for it to actually execute this Word document. And here, once we've gone in, we can see that it created all things. Everything is ticked green and we have some values that came out, which is great. 
um, we can see that we created a file and it had docx on the end. So let's nip back to that list, sorry, the uh, document library, and we can see we have a document. And if we open that up, I always open in the app, we can see we have that test data has come through. Perfect. If we were to do that in a statement of work document, that would have come out as a statement of work. Sorry, I don't know why that always does that. So let's add a little bit more in here. So if we go back to contract details, now it's not always the case that you have all of the details available to you at the point that you want to create a contract. Now imagine that we're doing the Word document one and we've got all of those fields to fill in. You might have 10% of those, you might need to go and check some data, you might need to nip off to company's house and get some data. So we're going to do two things. Firstly, we're going to allow you to choose which document you want to create so that we can have multiple types. And then we're going to have an option to create now, yes or no, so that we can set that to no if we don't want the flow to actually go ahead and create the document for us. And don't forget, we did this on create or amend so that now if I amend the record and switch it to yes, that's the point that it will kick off and go and change that. So having added those parts, we then need to um, update the flow to be able to have the, vari the, the variance, so to be able to choose one field or the other. So we need an action in here, which is going to be a condition. And we're going to look for this control here. We're going to put in a condition that says, if the value, scroll down to go and find it, if the create now is equal to true, then we know we're going to go ahead. So in this yes side, we can just drag up the values that we've already got. Or we're going to put in a second condition because don't forget we said, yes, we're creating it, but now we need to detect which document it is. So if we go to the document type value is equal to, um, and we're going to need in here, simple or statement of work, either one yes or no, because we've only got two. You can have multiple cases for multiple different types of document. So we've already done the simple document. So if yes, we're going to drag our values in here. And if no, we now need to create these values again. Now, nicely, we can copy and paste these, this, these actions over uh, by adding them to the clipboard and then bringing them out over here from my clipboard. Now, one thing to be aware of is that you need to change the input values for each of these. So Copying does give you a head start and it makes things a lot quicker, but do just be aware that you need to uh, go in and change those things. So then if we test this, you can see that I've renamed things so that I've got create statement of work here so that I know that down here I'm picking up the create statement of work. Oops, one off screen. Um, the create statement of work document. So I need to pick the right one. Also, I've still got uh, values in there like contract and company name, etc. So I needed to be able to um, to change those as well. We put nothing in the if no side of things because flows work down the page. So if it's no, it will just stop. And that's what we want it to do. So if I then edit this record, which is currently set to no and change it to yes, we're looking for a statement of work to be generated. And I've been through and I've filled in the statement of work values that I want to put in. Uh, within the flow. And if we refresh, we should see a new run start. Let's refresh one more time. There we go. And it's running. And if we go into that flow, we should see that everything completed successfully. And we should see which side of the branch that it went down. So yes, it was true that we were to create it and it went down the no side, which means that we're creating a statement of work. So if we jump back to the contracts created document library and refresh here, we should see the statement of work. And if we open that up, we should see our fields filled in. Now, I wasn't particularly picky about where I put them, so we might have to search that document just to find our values, which if we remember were Sharon's flowers, which I don't see. Let's just search for that. There we are. Sharon Sumner, that's my contract uh, contact details. And if we put in flowers, there we are, it's right down in the signatory. So you can see how this is starting to build out and we could have had this solution build out massively to be able to get the complex document uh, fields filled in for us. 
Now, if we nip back to that list and add in a new item and we don't select yes. So let's do one that we're not ready to um, to quite create yet. Literally not ready. Again, you could be off collecting all kinds of data that you need to put in the solution. So we're going to just do the simple one this time and we're going to leave this as no. OK, so hopefully if we go back to to the flow and obviously the end user won't see this technology, the idea is to bury this technology behind the functionality that the end user would see. But just so that you can see what happened, we go down the yes branch and we can see that it wasn't satisfied. So effectively, that's a no, which means it would have done nothing, which is exactly what it did. If we then change that, oh, we'll just show you nothing was created in here. If we were then to change that to a yes, we would uh, get a simple document created. So we've done that. And jump back to flow. Now it's running. Refresh it again, that succeeded. And we should see that that's gone down the other branch. That's correct here. So it's a yes, so it's carrying on. And that's gone down this side. Now, if we jump back to the contracts location and refresh here, we should see there we are <laughs> not really contract. Doc. <laughs> Brilliant. Genius. Um, and if we open that much simpler document, we should just see those three fields that we selected completed. Not ready. Complete this. Brilliant. OK, so they weren't great examples of the type of documents that you would create. You would have your own documents under here, but you can see the principle. This is a vanilla solution for you to show that. The way that we're going to bring this together as a community, the way that we're going to get the team part to work is to bring this into the contracts team within Microsoft Teams. So the first thing we want to do is to create um, and this has actually changed this experience since I did this. Um, first thing we want to do is to bring the document libraries into here. Now, we're not going to bring templates in here because we don't need templates. It's up to the templates team to have the right contract template in place. So we're just going to have completed contracts and we're going to have the details list. Let's go and grab that SharePoint list. And actually, they should be the other way around in theory. You have the details before you have the contracts. There you go. So now from within Teams, we don't see any of the technology under the hood. All we know is we start adding data into contract details. Um, just because we've been given uh, you know, a new requirement to create a new contract. So this time we'll go with my new co. We'll use my name again because I can remember it and we're going to create. A statement of work and we're going to do it now. So as far as end user is concerned, all they've done in Teams is gone to the correct tab, entered those contract details. The next step will be to go to the other tab. And give it a minute. Perhaps it wouldn't have been that quick. It's definitely there. We can see it's there. We could nip to um, Power Automate if we want to, to make sure this is actually happening. Let's just do that because that's being a little slower than I would like it to be. So if we just jump back here and have a look, ah, that looks like it's actually just not kicked off yet. So again, uh, when you're testing, uh, it's always a little bit frustrating that you're having to wait a couple of seconds for it to kick off. Still see nothing in here. Ah, here we are. So. Like I say, it will take a minute to run and it will take about another minute to create the document. You can see it's sitting waiting for 11 seconds. And when that gets to one minute, that will probably be done. By the magic of video. Boom, that should be done. 24 seconds. Come on. There it is. Like I say, at the one minute mark. So we can see it's come down the statement of work branch, which is what we wanted it to do. But as far as the end user was concerned, they were just in their team space and they would have refreshed here. And there is our new contract. So we've added contract details. We've jumped to, to completed contracts and there's our document. And under the hood, somebody has done all the magic of mapping all the correct fields that you put in to the document itself so that a beautiful document comes out the other end with everything completed. So that really solves the first part of our story. So we've still got two more pieces to solve. So let's push on. 
So for part two, again, the same type of document, but this time we've been given back a PDF, something that's been signed and scanned in. And now we need to interpret what that is using the AI builder. And again, that's a premium service. And we're going to use the PDF reader pattern. And again, we're going to use Teams and SharePoint to do that. Let's jump straight in. So again, we already have our team. Here it is. We've got our completed contracts and our contract details in place. And now we need to bring this document in once it's been uh, scanned in for us. So we're going to jump over to um, Power Apps. And we're going to create a model to begin with. So we're going to go into the AI Builder and we're going to build a model. So you'll notice that I've got my free trial here. So um, you do need to get the AI Builder as a package for this. But let's go into form processing. There's various other types here. Object detection and prediction are really nice. Object detection will take maybe 50 or so photos to be able to detect something for you. Uh, prediction is about understanding whether a customer will buy or not. Forms processing is looking at the document and working out what's in it. So we're going to call our signed documents. Not that it matters what it's called, as long as we know what it's called. And we're going to, the first thing it's going to ask us to do is to add some documents to that model. So I've already got some documents here, so I'm only going to use six documents to train this one. Now, as you can see, these documents all look the same and there's the trick. So I have a pattern now that every contract I'm creating, I'm creating a front sheet. And obviously I would have the previous solution to create that front sheet for me. Um, and it may have got altered as its life, uh, you know, as it went through that life cycle. So it's now going to analyze these documents and I'll show you in detail how we pick the fields on those um, just in one second after this is analyzed. I'm going to leave it to analyze in real time because it's important to see just how quickly it does this. Although you'll find that it can take anywhere from 60 seconds up to maybe three or four minutes. But I've always found that if I go off and grab a cup of coffee when I come back, this bit is definitely done. So it is really quite swift. And again, depending on the variances in the documents and the quality of the scan will, will really depend how quickly that goes. So what you can see is what it's really looking for here, and this was a learning part for me. So I tried to scan in the documents that we'd had previously where there was data in them and it couldn't work out what that content would be because what it's looking for is this pair, the tag and the value. And as you can see, it auto picked all of the ones I wanted to pick. It gives me the option to change what I've picked, although I didn't actually save that. Um, and I can say I want those nine fields all to be part of what the model brings from my documents. So then you go through to the training mode. And again, this is really quick. So if we jump back into signed documents, you'll see that it is currently training and is ready to be published. So really, really fast at doing the training part. We can then jump straight to using the model within Power Automate or within Power Apps on this side, but I tend to use the link over here once it's finished publishing, just so that I know that it actually has finished publishing. Otherwise, I find it doesn't connect quite as well. So we just wait for it to finish and then we hit the use model button or over here in Power Apps, but I tend to use create new app straight to Power Apps. Now, what this is doing under the hood is it is connecting up to the model. So it's just doing the steps of going in and grabbing the model for us. So if we carry on, then what's happened is we have an analyze button inside of our Power App. So again, I'm not going to do a pretty Power App. I'm just going to leave this vanilla for you. But excuse me, if we go straight into preview mode, and analyze a document. Now, this is important to do because I find that if you're trying to set up an app in the background before you've analyzed a document, it struggles. Once you analyze the document, it gives the whole thing some context. So the form processor has done a little bit of work and it now understands what its variables are that it's picked up from the document. So if we then add some fields on this page, and for those of you that have created an app before, there's a reason I'm using text input rather than label. And I'll tell you that in a second. So if we add the field on the page, we can now go to the forms processor dot and then get the form content and go and find the values of the fields using the dotted path dot fields and then the field that we're looking for. So if we look at, I think we're looking for the company name or um, I think that's called two in this case, actually. Well, let's bring any data out so you can see it. So if we find the contact, we can see that that's Bob Smith. Now we can copy and paste this uh, field many times to bring out other data. 
and that's now available to us on the copy paste here rather than the uh, add new field and that just means that the full path is available to us so on this one we just need to change this end part to expiry i'm not sure i put an expiry value in there but let's bring that out um, and we also want who it's for which i left as the two field okay so we've got three bits of data coming out there now as with anything that comes through as a pdf it could be that the values themselves either aren't quite right or aren't typed in quite right. We might want to make a change before we save that down to our list of data of contracts that we hold, which is why these are text fields. So we have the ability to overwrite whatever comes out of that document. So as you can see, we've analysed another document, we've got different data. And what we need to do with that data then is to save that back to a SharePoint list. So we're going to save these details down to a list that we're going to look at to see what contracts we have in place and what and when things are going to expire. So we've got to do some setup before we get into the saving the details because we're going to need the SharePoint lists in place to save that those details too. So if we then jump, we, we want to connect that to SharePoint, but we've got to jump back to SharePoint to create the list to put the details into. So again, let's go to the top of the site and create a new list. And this time we're going to get the, um, the details. So this is going to be the signed contracts. So this is our data from contracts that have been signed. Again, we need to add some values. So we need to pull out the data. We're just going to use it as text fields. You can use dates, um, et cetera. Um, but we're just going to pull out some simple ones to show you, like I say, vanilla solution. So we've got the company name, the contact, and I think we had expiry date in there. Yeah. Um, but let's see if we can just pull those two out for now. So back in the Power App, we now need to bring the data source of SharePoint into the Power App to be able to connect to it and write that data back. So if we go to data sources and we look at the connectors and we want to go to SharePoint and SharePoint online. So we're connecting to a SharePoint site. If we wait for them to load, we can just pick the site and we want to pick the signed contracts list, which is where we want to put this data back. So we now have a connection to contract signed, which I can at any time if I change the fields in contract signed, it's important to come in here and refresh the data right here. OK, so now we can patch the information that we're pulling into this Power App into that SharePoint list. So to be able to do that, we're going to write a patch statement here. Um, and Power Apps is getting so much better at the IntelliSense side of this and showing you how you can write this in. So a patch statement has a, a definite formula and you can just Google this or go and have a look at some at some videos from myself or from Shane Young or anybody that's blogging about Power Apps and they'll show you how a patch statement is written. And so what we're saying here is we're patching this information back to contract signed and we put in this uh, JSON pair value set, which uh, I think that was company. Yeah, which is going to bring back all of the data that we've pulled out and push it to SharePoint. Now, interestingly, it's important that we grab the data from the fields on the page rather than the um, the forms processor, because if we had over typed any of the fields on the page, we must get it from those fields on the page, which is why we're not saying that the data comes from the form processor in this particular statement. So let's just put in the three that we want to bring back, um, which I think we're putting into title company and we're bringing out the contact as well. All text fields. So we've put dot text after each one. Put that final bracket in, close the statement, and then let's jump into uh, the preview so that we can test that. And if our button goes slightly gray, then we know it's doing something impressive. So we'll analyze a new document just to bring different data back to the screen. Just takes a moment. And there you can see uh, if we want to change Microsoft, oh, maybe not capitals. Um, if we just want to put limited on the end, just to change that data because we want it saved correctly. We've gone slightly gray, so that feels like it saved the data. If we jump back to SharePoint, then we should be able to see our data pulled through to the list. Okay. 
So now we can add in some extra data that makes the solution a little bit more extensive and giving us that functionality that we were looking for. Oops. And we also want to bring this back to Microsoft Teams. So if we jump back into the Teams environment, we now want to bring the tool to be able to scan those documents directly into Teams. So if we add in the Power App, and again, I should have done this the other way around. This should have been a, a, a tablet view rather than a phone view. You know, um, I'll leave it to you to make it make it perfect. But if we go and grab our import contracts Power App, which I've published and shared, don't forget to do that. Um, it's now available for our team. Now, the other thing that we need to show them is where that data lives, which isn't a document library, it's a list. Let me just grab the right one. So if we grab the list called signed, we then know that we're going to get those signed details available for people to see. So again, despite everything we've done, all the end user needs to see is the ability to be able to analyze a document. So let's analyze one of those documents. And again, obviously, we would have loads more documents coming in that have been signed, not just these standard ones, and it will work on anyone that follows this pattern. Um, and there we have a name, a date and a company name. So if we hit the Save Details button and then we jump across to the contract signed. And there's our company, too. So even faster than the first solution, this one does come across straight away. So you can see from an end user point of view, regardless of the technology under the hood, we have the ability to bring this information directly in. There's another one. If we just append this slightly just to show you that it does write in the variance of that data. And then we jump to contract signed. Oops, lost my mouse. There we go. There we are. And you can see that the junior came across. So it's the data that I'm putting in those documents that's coming through to that list. So then to manage expiry, we're going to need a date. So what I've done ahead of time, because we are running out of time, is I've added in an expiry date column and I'm going to nip back to um, to Power Automate and now create a brand new flow to be able to go and check on a monthly basis in that contract details list to see if we have, in fact, got anything that it's expiring. So what I'm going to do is if I check on a monthly basis for anything within the uh, SharePoint list. So if we point to the list of the signed contracts, so this would have our expiry date written into it. So and we're going to do a rule that says apply to each, which is a control that we're going to add in. So we're going to say the value from the list and then choose a condition, which will do the apply to each. So we're going to say if the expiry date within that a particular set of information that we've got back, which it should allow us to pick it from here. If we just search for expiry. There it is. So if the expiry date is um, less than or equal to today's date plus a variance of 30 days. So if we do an expression where we do add days and then we say uh, UTC now, which is the, the equivalent of today in expression values, I'll just get that out of the way so that we can read that. And it does give you some nice help at the top there as to what you're doing. So over here, if we just add in UTC now, we pick that from the list. It puts in all of our brackets for us. And then we just do a comma of how many days we want that variance to be. So that's going to be 30 days. So we're going to say if the expiry date is less than or equal to today plus 30 days, then we're going to take action. So now we need to tell somebody that things are about to expire. So if we jump down this list and I always lose this one, we are looking for the one that posts a message to um, to a channel because that keeps everybody in that team's environment. So if we post a message to a channel as a flow bot, there we go, and we pick the correct team again, which is our contract team, and we're just going to go with a general. We could have had a notification channel, et cetera, that people could have been uh, you know, watching. And we're going to add a message in here saying that something is old um, and we want them to come back and have a look at this item or easily get to the item details. So we're going to put in a hyperlink, which should be link to item. Um, and I have made a little mistake there, but I'll carry on because mistakes do get made and I'll show you how that mistake manifests itself. So we're just going to put in a hyperlink saying check it out here. 
and we've just written some HTML around that. If we save this, and then we can just run this flow because this is a recurrence flow. So we can just run that. And the trigger action is to hit the button and say run. And it will go through our signed list and look for anything that's got an expiry. Now, hopefully I've got an expiry there that qualifies. And you can see that it's gone through the list and it should have written a message because that expiry was in fact of the correct date. So if we refresh, um, that one is old, and we go back to posts, we can see, oh yuck, that hyperlink didn't quite work. Now, anybody that knows HTML will know why that didn't work, but I left it in just to show you. If you put a capital A on an ahref, the hyperlink doesn't work. So all we have to do is change that capital A to be a lowercase a. That's just my poor typing. And then we're going to save that again and run it one more time. And we should get a correct link. I do love the fact that you can test. It is always worth testing. Let's knit back to the team and hope we've got something that's better, a little bit more useful. So we can check this out here and it'll take us directly to the information that we need to be able to go and start that process again. We get this notification directly in the channel, so we're working together as a team. So in this solution, we can now put in contact, contract details, create a contract. We can now import our contracts and update the information into contract signed with an expiry date that will then trigger an event if that expiry is within the next month. Now what I'm showing you is analyzing another document um, and the idea was to show you that it would write the expiry date back to the list but what you'll notice is, I'll just pick another one because we've already got that one, what you'll notice in this data set is that it doesn't in fact write the data back to the list I just hit that save details, nip to contract signed, you'll see there is a blank space. Now we're getting short of information, uh, uh, short of time for me to go through this thoroughly, so I'll just skip to the end of this. But um, to cut a long story short, what I did was I did not um, publish the application having made a change to it. So you do need to republish your app for it to then reappear and you need to refresh that app within Microsoft Teams for any changes. So I didn't write back the fact that expiry was being saved in that particular instance. So going back to our to-do list, we've created a contract, we've now scanned and converted contracts and we have expiry working. That's an interesting slide. Um, so I've managed to just squeeze that in. I think we're about to hit 45 and I'm about to get told off. Um, so that's my end to end demo of a really useful solution that you can go and put into your business today and be able to automate that entire legal contract process. Now, if you've got any questions, please do post them in the chat or I will just jump over to a forum and continue chat or scan the thing and come and talk to me online or you know let's let's get together and have a teams chat about anything and any way you want to implement the solution i also have uh, two videos on my youtube channel going through this exact solution please do go and fill in the survey the goteams.fans survey and give us some feedback about this session if you thought i just talked too much or went through it too fast or too slow whatever. We need to hear your feedback so that we can make these sessions as useful as possible for you. That's me. Thank you, Sharon. I think um, that was uh, really informative and I really learned some stuff and uh, it's amazing what you can do. Uh, there are no questions at the moment, uh, but I saw there uh, were a lot of attendees and uh, they didn't leave, which means it was super interesting. <laughs> Excellent because there's so much awesome content going around. Um, I have one question though, and um, uh, is there any licensing around this that need, we need to be aware of? Absolutely, so the, the first Flow connector I showed you would need a premium connector, so you would need a Flow premium in some way, so that's either a per flow, which you can't buy one, you have to buy five, which just means we need to find a really good use case for those flows. So there is uh, either a per flow or a per user connector, um, or flow upgrade that you would need. And the second one, the AI builder, you do need a separate AI license as well. So um, yes, there is license implication. I'm not going to talk about costs because it changes every time I mention it. <laughs> and, yep. um, you know, we just use the technology. We can't be held accountable for what Microsoft do with the pricing. Right. 
Yep. Well, that's uh, good to be aware of. Um, so uh, we have posted a link to the uh, breakout session where you can have some post um, session discussions. Okay. And um, we'll see you there. Thank you, Sean. I'll jump over there now. See you in a moment.